Hi, uh, this is the first in a sh short series of videos on 3.5.2 legislation. Um, and there are five different types of legislation that you need to be aware of. <coughs> Excuse me. But let's start by ensuring that we know what legislation is. So legislation refers to laws which are legally enforceable rules. They restrain business activities and the purpose of laws is generally to protect um, a stakeholder it could be the local community and the environment, it could be uh, employees, it could be customers, etc. There are a range of different laws, as I'm sure you will be aware of, that affect businesses. So what do you need to know? Well, it's beneficial to know examples of different laws that affect businesses, that there are benefits to businesses of uh, there being laws in place. There are also costs to businesses and what will happen to businesses if they don't follow legislation. So, I'll give you a second to read this. It is a typical question that could be asked, a 10 or 12 mark question that could be asked on um, legislation. You will see that they specifically, in this question from the uh, A-level paper two, they specifically, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get my laser pointer, um, asked about employee legislation. So um, it says here that you need to know these different types of legislation. If you're, not, if you're talking about legislation in general and not employee legislation and the effect on VW, then um, you are, are not going to be successful. So it's important that you know all of the different types of legislation and the pros and cons to businesses following them because this assess the likely effect a good way to answer this type of question might be to look at pros, cons, conclusion. So uh, we'll start off with consumer protection laws. So the aim of consumer protection laws is obviously to protect consumers. Some examples include the Trade Descriptions Act, the Sale of Goods Act. Um, trade description is how you describe the product that your business is providing, so it would affect advertising and what's written on the uh, label, for example, the number of calories, um, the ingredients used in food, uh, you know, the components of um, a product, etc. That's trade descriptions. The Sale of Goods Act is um, around, um, you know, the laws around selling to people, and basically, what does it cover? Um, so, products must be as described. So if you're describing a cheese as organic, it actually has to be organically produced. Um, it has to be of a satisfactory quality. I just hear my little boy coughing in the background. Bear with, um, sorry about that if that's uh, coming across. Um, that the products are of a satisfactory quality. In other words, if I buy a blue biro, um, that should be of satisfactory quality it should write that's why i'm buying a biro and is it fit for purpose again um you know if i buy a biro the implication is i'm going to write with it does that biro actually have ink that flows when i write so um that is what uh, consumer protection covers products are as described they're sold at satisfactory quality and they are actually fit for purpose so what might the benefits and costs to businesses be? Well, you could just pause the video and brainstorm these, see if you can come up with some ideas. So if you've done that, you can check against these. Well, first of all, I think the most important benefit of consumer protection laws is that they lead to consumer confidence and trust. So just imagine, I always think with laws, it's worth thinking what would happen if they weren't in place. So if consumers, didn't know that they had rights to refunds, for example, if they're not satisfied with the product or, um, uh, you know, what would happen if um, products didn't have to be as described, you know, businesses could say anything about their product. What would happen if businesses uh, didn't have to sell a product that was of satisfactory quality and fit for purpose, right? Nobody, you know, it would be very difficult to sell stuff you know, particularly expensive stuff like cars and sofas and things like that, that people have to part with a lot of money, people wouldn't do it because they won't be confident that they would be getting a decent product. So ultimately, yes, these um, 
uh, laws are going to have costs for businesses to follow them. But without these laws in place, uh, there will be far fewer sales going on. So um, it also provides an incentive to businesses to improve quality, which will improve their reputation and brand image, and should lead to increased customer satisfaction if the products do what they actually are supposed to do. You know, customers are you know, it can be quite a simple bunch. If I buy a product and it does what I want it to do, then generally I'm pretty happy with that product. So lots of benefits to businesses. But what are the costs? First of all, we're going to have to invest in some sort of quality control. Um, it could be total quality management where I'm training all my staff. It could be a quality control system where I've got the inspector at the end of the production line. Whatever. I'm going to have to be making sure that my product meets some sort of standards. I'm going to have to train my staff to ensure that they can provide good advice and um, uh, you know, ensure that the products are manufactured correctly. I'm going to have to deal with complaints, issue refunds. Okay, this is all part of consumer protection. And there might well be some wastage in terms of products that aren't fit for standard. Um, so obviously there are costs to businesses. Um, but there are also benefits to businesses of following consumer protection laws.